Hi, I'm Matthew Garrison, uh, and I'm here to uh, kind of bring you through some of the details of this instrument, um, which is the Matt Garrison Standard Series 2, uh, which is basically a continuation of the first uh, uh, standard that we'd, uh, that we'd worked on with Fodera. And um, there's been a, a few modifications here and there. Just wanted to let you know the first one did so well that uh, it was important for us to kind of continue the legacy of sorts of this instrument and um, you know I think they sold every piece that was there ran out of the woods uh, so we're, we started off with something new um, they're equally as uh, incredible instruments so don't forget the first one but the series two is just as amazing um, so I'm gonna take you through a few of the details of the instrument so this is probably the sound that's most asso you know, mostly associated with me I have essentially rear pickup. Uh, it's not in coil tap. Um, at the moment it's pretty much flat. Um, what I do tend to do, which drives Nick Epifani crazy, somebody I've been working with for years, is I tend to boost the low end a lot. In this case it's very flat. It's, it's actually completely flat. <laughs> Uh, that gives me that kind of crunchy, kind of cut through texture or tone that I'm looking for uh, in both bass lines and also the solo stuff and also chord chordal uh, uh, techniques that I use. So, but if you boost the bass a little bit, you'll hear the difference here. It's, it's pretty, uh, pretty serious <laughs> boost in bass, so you have to be a little bit careful, but um, that's too much, so I roll off a little bit from the very top end. Uh, sometimes when I'm uh, when I have to play some phrases that are that are more related to uh, soloing, I'll roll off some of that low end because it's just a little bit too much. So that's so even if you leave it at midway, it's pretty works out pretty good. But a little bit above that. Okay, so another thing I do, I, I, I'll use that sometimes for, as I said before, bass lines, uh, you know, even sometimes in, in the more jazz sense, oh, you know, for walking. But if you bring, uh, bring both pickups to the forefront, that also works for me in the in terms of walking bass lines. Um, what, something I've been experimenting a little bit with these days is actually just going to the full front pickup, which is a little bit unusual these days. <laughs> Although, uh, you know, it's, it was kind of a prevalent sound in the 70s sort of thing. So, but you know. Right, that's one of the things that comes straight to mind when you think of that front pickup sound. Uh, but I've actually been using it for... Even for just some linear stuff, or some baseline stuff, when you want a really fat, juicy to sound, sound. Maybe, you know, thinking of some Caribbean music or reggae styles, I tend to you know, dial it all the way to the front sometimes just to get that really chunky. Um, so that's that. Um, some other things that I've been exper experimenting with are, uh, again, bringing both pickups online, coil tap, treble boost, bass boost, and uh, this is unusual for me because I don't really slap that much, but 
uh, you know, why not? It's fun. <laughs> but just so you get a, an idea of the sound of this instrument. <coughs> I use it, you know, for a variety of things such as strumming, slapping, that kind of setup and that sound works very well for me. Um, there's a, you know, also my four finger stuff kind of. <laughs> Uh, that's, so that's that. Another cool thing is actually to keep it in the same setup that I just, uh, you know, dialed it into and go, go to the rear pickup. The only issue you'll have there is you'll have a little bit of the 60 cycle that we're, they were talking about earlier, but it's so crunchy that, uh, you know, that's the payoff. <laughs> You know, again, what I'm doing here is I'm doing a lot of the technical things that I do, uh, but, you know, by kind of pointing out the different parts of what the instrument can render, um, you know, in terms of, you know, the tones that you can pull out of it, the same concepts work for just being a simple bass player person. You know, you don't have to do all this crazy uh, four-finger stuff and strumming and whatnot, but the instrument works in pretty much every genre. Um, I've used these instruments in every possible, you know, uh, scenario from, you know, avant-garde, completely nuts jazz, free improv music to high-end pop. Uh, you know, they just, as uh, uh, Joey was pointing out, these instruments, you only need one, really, to be honest, you know, by just working your way through the, the placement of your hands in terms of where you're plucking the instrument, if you're going to use a pick, uh, you know, using the different uh, EQ section. The EQ section is very deep. Um, you can tend to hear a lot more regarding the EQ when you're in uh, rear pickup mode, because then you'll really hear how much How much control you actually have. That's treble. Coil tap. Of course, you can even take off your preamp, which I don't know, some people, I'm not sure where that. I rarely have gotten into that. It, that actually has come in handy when the battery dies and <laughs> you don't pay attention to your battery, but. You get to that, you can get that there's a certain texture and tonal quality to having a, you know, playing without the preamp as well. But I'm pretty much a, a preamp guy, so it's always on for me. Um, yeah, this, uh, this is the uh, Matt Garrison uh, Standard Series 2. Uh, it's an instrument that's just, you know, again, I've only been playing it for the last two hours or so. And um, I can't say enough about it. It it's, feels amazing. It's incredibly balanced, and the sound is just ridiculous. Um, I'm, you know, there's there's a difference between the signatures and the standards, but if you really think about it, they, they're so well crafted that it everything just uh, works on these instruments as well. So um, I highly recommend this beautiful instrument. <laughs>